Hello, we're back, and we have another screencast here. This one is on uh, hydraulics, called Big Movers. This is the last section in Section 2, and we're going to examine how machinery can actually help us lift objects. And we've used a little bit of examples before, but uh, we're going to look at uh, something called hydraulics uh, for today. So, just to start off right away, most machines that move very large, very heavy objects use something called a hydraulic system. I'll define hydraulic system in a little bit. But a hydraulic system applies a force to levers, gears, or pulleys, traditionally. So it's a system that applies a force. And it is able to increase the mechanical advantage of a machine. Now, in most modern projects, uh, uh, construction projects, sorry, use hydraulic equipment because the work can be done quicker and safer, and not to mention, can be done with a lot more uh, force. There are many different practical applications of hydraulic systems that perform tasks, uh, which makes the work much, much uh, easier. And some examples that when I think of hydraulics, I think of uh, heavy machinery, I think of like this dump truck here, I think of a, a car jack inside of a mechanics car shop. And each one of these, uh, you can see that they do a lot of heavy lifting. And that heavy lifting would not be possible if it wasn't for a fluid in a very closed off system. Okay. This idea of, of fluids within a system comes from the idea of pressure. And long ago, a man by the name of, I believe it's pronounced Blaise Pascal, I mean, how cool is the name Blaise? Anyways, this is Blaise Pascal here, this handsome looking guy. And he was the first guy that was just incredibly fascinated with pressure. I mean, he would spend his day looking at how pressure works. Something that you and I look at now and just go, yeah, it's there. He was the first to really study it. And because he was the first to study it, uh, he actually got to name it and actually created a law with regards to pressure. Now, when we get into the uh, mi uh, mixtures and fluids unit, we'll get into more of what pressure uh, is and how we define it with, within the particle level. Um, but here's what you need to know about Pascal's law as, it's, as it relates to what we're doing uh, here. A Pascal's law, and I'm sorry, I don't know why you don't have space for this in your notes, so I would suggest maybe writing this in the small space beside one of the pictures. Uh, Pascal's law states the following. An enclosed fluid transmits pressure equally in all directions. Let me say that again. An enclosed fluid a fluid that is uh, trapped within a system, transmits or produces or, or spreads out pressure equally in all directions. And I have to emphasize something. This is a closed system. And what that means is that once you put the fluid into a system, into this hydraulic system, no fluid is added or taken out. It stays closed. It is sealed off. Because if you add fluid or take away fluid, you're going to change the pressure. Okay, so. Here's what a hydraulic system is. Now we know what the law is. Hydraulic system is a system that uses a liquid to move an object. The basic idea is this. You apply a force at one point, it's transmitted through the fluid to another point, and something moves. Here's the best way I can describe that. Here is my closed system. Fluid's not going anywhere. And I have two pistons here. One piston on the left, and one piston on the right. If I apply a force through this fluid. I apply a force on this side with this piston here. You notice how I get a transmission of, of force here? The fluid goes down on the left, is forced through the bottom, and pushes up on the right. It forces that other piston up the exact same amount as the other piston went down. If I, if I apply forces in the other direction, I get it back to the same state, to the, the, the equilibrium state, the equal state. And I can keep going back and forth applying pressure at either end, and it moves the pistons. This is a hydraulic system. This is the very basics of a hydraulic system. Okay, So pistons within a system can be different sizes, and hydraulic devices use pistons that are different sizes attached to very, uh, attached to very flexible pipe. Now the input piston, the one that is being pushed on first, is used to apply the force to the fluid. This then creates pressure within the fluid, and the pressure has to go somewhere. It builds up, and it builds up unless it's got some place to go. What ends up happening is that the fluid transfers this pressure to the output piston, the other side. 
This pressure then exerts a force on the output piston, forcing it upwards or downwards, and the result is a mechanical advantage that makes the system useful. You push down on one end, the fluid transfers the force, and it pushes up on the other end. Great. So now we have something that actually works and something we can actually use. But if we change this slightly, if we change it to look at like look like this, where we have a much smaller piston on one side and a much larger piston on the other, this generates a true mechanical advantage. This is where you would see an advantage in, let's say, a uh, automotive shop where they want to lift the car up above the ground in order to get a peek underneath it, they would use a system like this, where the car would be placed on the right side, and on the left side is the machine that applies the force. So you notice on the left there it says, apply force of 100 pounds. If I apply a force of 100 pounds on a small piston, and I attach it to a very large piston, I actually get a much larger output force. There's actually 900 pounds of force being pushed out over here because for each uh, inch of force on the left, that was 100 pounds. Okay. Let's take a look again. Apply a force of 100 pounds, my output force is 900 pounds. So I get a huge mechanical advantage here, all because I made one piston larger than the other. This kind of is like the idea of gears in the sense that if you change the size of one, you get a speed advantage, right? and a torque. If you change the size of the piston here, if you push down on a small piston, the larger piston will push up with a much greater force, but will be slower. Okay. If I push down on a large piston, I don't have to push down as hard, but I get the other one to push up much faster. So there's trade-offs that we talked about once again. This is what's called hydraulic multiplication. As soon as I change the size of the output piston, to be larger than the input, I can generate a mechanical advantage. And that's exactly what we want to do. So what does this mean? What are you trying to tell me here? Well, I'm trying to tell you that fluids transmit pressure equally. And that a, f a smaller force on one piston can produce a larger force on the other. Because that pressure is transmitted through the fluid. It doesn't change through the fluid. It's all the same. And I think of this example here. Okay, any part of this crane that uses a hydraulic, let's say uh, by the, the the bucket here, right here, okay, there is a fluid within this piston that when the piston is pushed down or pushed up, it generates a great amount of mechanical advantage. So much so that it can move and lift the bucket on the bottom with absolute great eat ease. The piston there is much smaller than the piston that's you can't actually see that's much larger and it generates a ton of force. This is what the operator is able to do when using this type of machinery. So here's what it would look like inside. You have a force of let's say 20 newtons on the left being pushed down and the force is transferred uh, or the pressure sorry, is transferred through the system but the force outwards is huge. It's 500 newtons on the other side. If we look at this we can actually calculate mechanical advantage. Because to calculate mechanical advantage, all we need is an input force and an output force. So what is the input force here? The input force, or the force in, is 20 newtons. The output force, the force coming out, is 500 newtons. So let's chunk into our equation. Mechanical advantage, output force divided by input force. Output, 500 newtons. Input, 20 newtons. What do we get the answer to be? 500 divided by 20, 25. That means the mechanical advantage of this machine is 25 times what it was putting it in. That's incredible. That's huge. Okay? Not, never mind just the 5 that we had before. This is 25. So by changing the size of the pistons, and I know this is uh, written down in blue here, so just bear with me. By changing the size of the pistons, we use less force on the smaller piston and use a larger force of the big piston to do work. So, so let me say that again. I apply less force on the small piston to produce a greater output force on the larger piston, all because I have a different size here. And a great example of this would just be simple hydraulic jacks that you might find in your car. Okay, Look at the one that lifts two tons. 
much smaller piston on the bottom there, right? Well, I mean on the top. And as you increase the amount of weight or the mass that it can it can lift, look at the size of the piston on the inst on the top. It is increasing dramatically. Look at the two ton compared to the eight. The eight compared to the twelve. The twelve compared to the fifty. That fifty ton jack can lift fifty tons worth of mass. That's huge. That's huge. All because we changed the size of the output piston. We made the output piston larger than the piston going in. So what do I need you to learn out of this, or what do I need you to pick up? Well, we have a law, Pascal's law. Pressure, can, uh, pressure within a system is transmitted equally as long as it's enclosed, and it transmits pressure in all directions the same. That we can, through hydraulics, lift an object or create a mechanical advantage. If we generate a, a hydraulic system where one piston is smaller than the other, more preferably that a small piston here is on the input side and a larger piston is on the output side, generating for us a mechanical advantage so that we can use machines such as the one shown here where it has a huge amount of force behind it so that we can use the dump truck shown here. We can lift a car, no problem. All of these things being able to use together is because of what's called hydraulics. Okay, Hopefully that's clear. Uh, if not, uh, please ask, always ask if you have any questions. And uh, that's it for today. That's big movers or hydraulics.